Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and in today's lesson we are going to compare rational numbers. First, I want to do a quick review of your inequality symbols. Alright, this is less than. This is the less than symbol. It is read 3 is less than 5. A lot of people get this confused with the greater than symbol. So if you're one of those, you might want to go ahead and write this down, where you would read this as 5 is greater than 3. One little clue that I have for the less than is I take my left hand and I take my thumb and my forefinger and I hold them up so it makes an L. Then if you kind of go and if you squish, if you kind of squish it, squish them together, it turns into a less than symbol. Okay, so less than. All right, so hopefully that will help you while we compare these rational numbers. Okay, so again, with comparing, it's kind of like with placing them on number lines you want to put them in the same form, either both as a fraction with common denominators, both in decimal form, both in percent form. Again, I would kind of stay away from the fraction just because then you have to find a common denominator. It can be too much of a hassle, easy to make a mistake. So instead, have 40%, one fourth. Everybody should know what one fourth is as a percent. We've talked about this a lot. It's one quarter out of four quarters because four quarters make a hundred cents. So one quarter is 25 cents, which is 25%. So we have 40%, 25%. We can easily compare them. 40% is greater. So I don't want my squished L. It's not less than. It is greater than. Okay, seven tenths and three fifths. I'm going to change my three fifths into a decimal. I'm going to change it into tenths. The skill factors times two. Three times two is six. I now have six tenths and seven tenths. Which one is greater? The seven tenths is greater. 33% and one third. As a percent, I know one third, it's that repeating threes. So I can write this as 33 and one third percent, or I can write it as 33.3 with that repeat bar percent. Now some of you may say, oh, they're equal, they're equal. They are not equal. Yes, they're both 33%, but the one third, it has a repeating three. It has a part with it. So it has just a little bit more than the 33%. So the one third is the greater number. So be very careful on that. Okay, we've got some a couple word problems to look at. The first one says, Three people share a bag of 50 marbles. Mark has 20% of the marbles, so Mark is 20%. Matt has 55 hundredths of the marbles, and Mayer has the remaining marbles. What fraction of the marbles does Mayer have, and who has the most marbles? Okay, before I even try to figure out the fraction, I'm going to put both of these as what I know is percent. Mark has 20%. So Mark is 20%. Matt, if I change this decimal to a percent, 55 hundredths becomes, do your DP, it becomes 55%. So in total, how much do Mark and Matt have all together? Well, if I add my percents together, they have a total of 75%. And if you'll recall, all of the marbles if somebody has all of the marbles, what percent do they have? They have 100%. So to find out how much Mayer has, Mayer has what's left over. I take my 100% and I subtract 75% and I get 25%. So Mayer has 25%. Because when I add Mark plus Matt plus Mayer, they have to add up to 100%, which they do. Okay, so now that I know the percent that Mayer has, 25%, I can easily convert that to a fraction. And yes, you can do your percents out of 100 and you could do 25 over 100 and simplify it, but 
this is one of the ones that you should know guys 25% is 25 cents which is how many quarters one quarter out of four so this is the answer to my first question what fraction of the marbles does mayor have he has one-fourth of the marbles and then who has the most well the most is going to be Matt he has 55 percent and that's how you compare again it's putting them all in the same form and comparing them it doesn't have to be all decimals like I was doing for the number lines here I did them as percents didn't I okay let's go ahead and work on the pizza problem so I'm going to clear this out just because if you don't have it written down pause it so you can finish writing it down but I need some space here to show my work so I'm going to clear it out three guys order a pizza Percy pays 33% of the bill. Frank pays two-fifths two -fifths of the bill. And Lefty pays the remaining amount. Who paid the most and who paid the least? Hmm. Well, this 33%, I could write it as a fraction out of 100. And then I'd have to change this to 100. But I think what I'm going to do is just take the two-fifths and change it to a percent. I think that's going to be the easiest. So for it to be a percent, it has to be out of 100. So my scale factor is going to be times 20. 2 times 20 is 40. 40 out of 100 is 40 percent. So Frank is 40 percent. I'm going to write it up here. Uh, Percy is 33 percent. And Lefty is the rest. Well, remember, the whole bill, if somebody pays the whole bill, that's 100%. So I can add Frank and Percy together, and then the rest is what Lefty pays. So when I add them together, I get 73%. So now I'm going to subtract that from 100. So I do 100 minus 73, and it's going to give me 27. So Lefty pays 27 percent. Again, Frank plus Percy plus Lefty should add up to 100 percent. Then it says who paid the most? Well, the most was Frank. He paid 40 percent. Who paid the least? The least was Lefty at 27 percent. Could you have changed these to decimals? Could you have changed them to fractions? Sure, you could have. This 33%, you could have made it 33 out of 100. Then making the 2 fifths out of 100, 40 out of 100. And then add them together and subtract from 100 to find out how much left he had left to pay, which would have been 27 out of 100. You could have done that. You could have changed them all to decimal amounts. 0. 0.33, 2 fifths. 40 hundredths, 0.40, or 0.4 tenths, 0.4. You could have done that. There are several different ways of doing it. It's There's not one right way of doing it. There's multiple ways. And you have to do it the way that is most comfortable with you, for you. Whether it's putting them all as percents, putting them all as decimals. Sometimes you're given more percents and it's easier to change them all to percents. Okay. Last one, which of the following statements is true? Okay, this one is less than because it has the squished L, squished L less than. The other two would be the greater than. I'm gonna start with, wow. These are both negatives. This is a positive and a negative. So we could do this one. Is zero less than negative one-tenth? Well, here's the zero. Your negative one-tenth is gonna be over here zeros furthest to the right so zero is greater than so this one is false here this one's pretty easy because I know what one-fourth is so this is a negative 25 hundredths so again is a positive less than a negative no it's not so this is false these are negative against negative negative against negative I'm going to go ahead and do the ones that are already in decimal format. And I just want to do a quick reminder. You've already learned about this. When comparing decimal numbers, you need to line up the decimal points. 
All right, they're tenths place, and then you compare their place values. So the tenths place, they're the same. So you have to move to the hundreds. And when you look at the hundreds, you would think that this one is larger. But remember, these are negatives. So it's the other way around. This one is going to be furthest or farther to the right or to the left of zero. So this is negative, and this one is closer to zero. So the negative two thousandths is actually larger than the negative twenty thousandths or negative two hundredths, however you want to read it. So is negative two thousandths greater than? This one is true. This one can get confusing, so be very careful. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's go ahead and do this one just for fun. Uh, negative one half. I know that this one half is fifty cents, so it's going to be negative. Or if you want to write it as a percent, negative fifty percent. This is the eighths. Okay, those eighths. That's one hundred and twenty-five. Eight is a denominator. Think of one hundred twenty-five thousandths. So five of them would make six hundred and twenty-five thousandths which if I do my DP and turn it to a percent, I get 62.5%, but it's a negative. Which one is closer to zero? Which one is furthest to the right? Negative 50 is, so this would be the larger one. So this is wrong, so this one is false. All right guys, good job.